busy video coming up. I'm going to try and keep this short, as short as possible, but I did want to document some things because it's quite remarkable what is going on here. I wanted to do a check for myself and take you along. Spikes, buds, cheese, let's go. Paphiopedalum, no ID, possible American hybrid. We have three. And before, in case my Angrecum leonis decides to blast another bud, you can see one has already blasted. I have one bud that I can see developing. It's small, but it's there. I'm going to count it. This is my Jumbo Mickey trying to do something. See how long it takes if this amounts to anything. But there is a spike. My Fred Clark Tiara, After Dark Black Pearl. There are two. My Oncostella Wildcat, Golden Red Star. Although I will not let it bloom. There is one though. My Week, Francis Fox, is pushing buds. I would say I'm going to count just one just because the state of the orchid, I can't see any more at this point, it's still too soon, but I'm going to count one. My Rinko Stylus Loose Theory Blue has four spikes. So there's three here, one there, one over here, and one over here, and one right here. My Vanda Denisoniana Dark Chocolate Star has a spike in here. And who would believe it? I certainly wouldn't have if you have told me. I thought these were roots on my Vanda Chow Praia. But I guess panic mode has kicked in. And these are four spikes. I wonder if that is even going to bloom, considering the time of year we're heading towards. My Angoricum bossery, two spikes, coming along very nicely. My Angoricum crestwood tomorrow star, one spike, progressing very, very nicely as well. 16 spikes. On my Twinkle Red Fantasy. Yes, I counted them <laughs> several times. 16. <laughs> Scooting over to my Cinnamon Twinkle here. Four spikes. My Lelia Crispilabia has two sheaths. My Lelia Enzfeldsii has a spike coming. My Vanda Lavender Mist, Louis, has a spike. My Leopard Yawn has three spikes coming. There's one. See? Two. Three. Zygonisia. Murasaki. Finally, a spike. The second piece that we cut off earlier this season of the Rinko Stylus Loose Neri, blue, also has a spike. My Lelia Pacavia back here has a sheath. Just because she's so pretty. This is Krasnetsia Green Light. And because she still smells so good, Dinard Blue Heaven. And my intermediate, Variety Aquini, has a sheath as well. And there is a shadow in there. It's taking a long time, whether there's going to be any kind of 
bloom coming. It's taking a long time, but hey, it's there. And my Colmenara Masai Red, also starting with one spike. And in the back here, there is a second spike coming already. So those are the two that I can see. I'm expecting the third growth also to develop some, but I won't count those. They're not there yet. Next to the Colmenara is my Caplia guatemalensis. And there's one sheath. And a second sheath. Not going to forget my beautiful Peggy Ruth Carpenter here. I still have one spike, two, three, four, five, six to open on this beautiful pepper fragrant orchid. Up next, a little more difficult, but my Dendrobium Tetragonum variety Giantium has things going on. There's going to be something coming up here, so that's one, two, three, four, tiny, but there, five, six, and Seven. And there you can see the three sheaths of the two orange nuggets I have. There's one on the left, and then there's the two on the right. It's not their time for blooming yet, so we'll have to wait and see if they even do something this year. Next year, sorry. If they bloom, they'll bloom next year. My Dendrobium Alexandre. Crossed with Polysema has two spikes. Incredible. Just beautiful buds. As a representative of my eight nubbins progressing on my Roy Tokonaga, here's just an example of one and another one. And where there was a longer one somewhere, right here. But eight in total. Tolumia pink beige. One and two spikes. I hope they are visible. And down here is a pink brished Tolumnia with another spike. My Epicatlia. Tiyoguchi Happy Field is also, has also got a nice sheath. I can't see any shadows in there, but based on the growth and how gorgeous it is, and the previous growth wasn't as big, I am confident I can count that without having to worry that I'm misleading. I'll be misleading a little bit later on, but I don't think I have to worry about this one. Just a little respite of beauty before the counting continues. CG Robling bopping around in the sun in competition with the Dinard Blue Heaven. And here's the Brassocatlia Venosa Wabash Valley. Looking absolutely gorgeous with that sun now. This is the sheath of my Yokosuka story. Beautiful, beautiful growth. It won't bloom for a while, but it is definitely mature enough to do so. And that's going to be for another video. Yokosuka story in sheath. Woohoo! There she is teasing with her three sheaths, Catlia Maxima and they are chubby, whether it's filled with air or not. 
There's a sheath within a sheath, so that's not an indication of buds in there yet. But I'm counting them because they are chubby. Oh, and look at this. This is my René Marquez, crossed with Brassavola Digbiana. Epidendrum, René Marquez, sorry. Also coming into sheath. We have a long ways to go yet, but there it is. Another sheath that I have is on my golden celle, Brassolelio Cattleya golden celle. There's no shadow in there. She's usually a winter bloomer, like late winter bloomer. If she blooms, there's that. Pastoral Innocence has a beautiful sheath as well, but it's just a tease. I think it's just an indication of maturity now, and I hope that the next growth will be the bloom growth. I have a sheath back here in my Panarica Brasovola. It's been there for a while. We'll see when they decide to bloom, if they bloom. And I have a gorgeous sheath here in my Panarica Ionocentra. And that is developing something inside. It's not chubby. It could be one of those teasers, sheaths within sheaths. I have a spike on my Vanda Green Hopper. Not a pretty plant. We'll see what the blooms will look like if I can get them through. I have some gorgeous buds developing. One may be blasting right there in my happy holiday. So there's four buds, but one looks like it's not going to make it. And that is from the chubby, chunky, weird growth of the season, the first one. And the second growth of the season is the normal, perfectly developed one. And it has a sheath, so I don't see why the distorted one would bloom and the second one wouldn't, but that's orchids. It's a game of guesswork. And here is my Catlianta little fairy with its half-sized growth of the season. But a gorgeous little sheath, and you can see it is chubby. There is something in there, so we will get some blooms, even if not the same display as last year. My golf green hair pig in the back there. Look at that sheath there. Let's do some artistic contortions to get you into it. Look at that massive sheath on my golf green hair pig. I love this structure and it's got that purple line across it there. Light indication, all good. Golf green hair pig, what, what a structure. Looking forward to that. We'll, we'll deduct one, <laughs> not really, but yeah. I lost the buds to my Crucero do Sul. So at least we know it has its potential, but they didn't make it. For whatever reason, I have as yet to figure out whether it's just because she's new here and she tried, or if, I've left her outside too long. The night temperatures haven't been bad at all. And it is now third week of November. So, oh, let's keep counting. Siamese doll kiwi. Look at that. And there's a sheath. That's the third growth of the season. Don't know if it's going to bloom, but she is coming onto her own very nicely after being repotted and divided. And then here, surprise, surprise, Lelia tenebrosa aurea. Beautiful freckling. There's all sorts of colors going on with the leaves, the freckling there. And I have a sheath. I don't know when that's going to bloom, if it's going to bloom, or if we have just reached the next stage of maturity. But hey, I'm counting. <laughs> A quick view of my Berioda. Last year I had 30 spikes on her, so I'm just going to go 
conservatively on this one and say 15, all right, if that's fair. We'll just put 15 in there. I'll do another video on her because I have to show you something about her. But Dendrobium bariota, let's go with 15 spikes. One cane on my Dendrobium nobili is also starting to bust some moves on the little nodes here. Lots of little nubbins starting to form. Some still minute, but they are there, ready to be counted. One, two, three, four, five, six swellings that I can see at this point on one cane. So we'll take them along into the count. My beautiful Fires Tonka Villiers has two spikes. One right there, growing nicely. And let's scoot around slowly. And one right here. Or are you on the other side? There we go, yes. So these are gonna get to about 80 centimeters long. Projected blooming February, around that time, February, maybe March, but February, 80 centimeters long. So they have a long way to go, but it's nice to see that they're already here. Maybe I can get two spikes to bloom this year and not break one. Goals, 2021 goals. And next door, I have my little No ID Cymbidium, but I've called her Beach Balls because of how her buds look. Has four spikes. One, two, three, four. Despite neglect, four spikes. Absolutely nothing to write home about, but they are spikes. I will do a separate video on all my den fowls. I have one spike here and another spike here. And I believe, having said all that, here is cousin it snoozing in the sun, going crazy, starting to. This is Maxillaria variabilis. I'm not even going to count what's going on in here. But there is a lot, and this is only just the start. So putting Cousin It into the spotlight. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I think I found them all. If I've missed some, yeah, hey, more surprises to come, but I think I found them all for this video. I really appreciate having you here and joining me on this little look-see of what is going on this time of year. A lot. <laughs> Have a wonderful day, everybody. Take care. Bye.